If you're uh, sitting there drinking your coffee, working on Excel, this video is for you. I'm going to be taking you through how to build charts like this, including callouts, the importance of callouts, and how to get this kind of styling that you see behind me. And we're also going to talk a little bit about why caffeine builds tolerance using the data behind me, and a little bit about why it affects your sleep and that sort of thing. If you're somebody that needs coffee to get through the day, this one's going to help you understand why. So just a little context, this chart behind me is showing uh, the amount of caffeine in your system over time, over a 48 hour period. We've done a little half-life equation here. In this case, half-life is how we determine how much caffeine is left in your system over time, hour by hour, based on whenever you first drank some coffee in the morning. To calculate this, we just use the dose of caffeine in milligrams, whatever the half-life is, and the hour of day. There's the uh, formula there if you want to use it yourself. And then everybody processes caffeine at different speeds, so we have different half-lives to show the average compared to the upper and lower limits for most of the population. And it all goes into this chart here. So our y-axis is showing milligrams of caffeine. In this example, 8 a.m., you drink 200 milligrams of caffeine, so like two cups of coffee. You start nice and high. Throughout the day, it drops down. Now, by the time you get to whenever you go to bed, you still are going to probably have roughly 30 milligrams of caffeine left in your system because caffeine actually stays in your system for quite a long time. And the real crazy part of this is that 8 a.m. the next morning, you still have 11 milligrams of caffeine from the day before. And when you drink your two cups of coffee, you get the same amount again. So you actually have more than you did yesterday, the next day. And if you keep doing this day after day after day, you gradually increase the amount of caffeine in your system, even though you drink the exact same amount of coffee every single day. Or excuse me, different people process caffeine at different rates. So if you're in like the 95th percentile of people that process it really quickly, you're going to have less of this problem. In fact, almost none of it. Strangely enough, people who use nicotine typically process caffeine a little bit more quickly, those types of folks. Um, you also process it faster when you're younger, just based off of what I've seen in the research out there. On the flip side, as you age, you actually process caffeine more slowly, and this is going to be an even more dramatic problem for you. You might have 50 milligrams of your 200 milligrams of caffeine still in your system when you go to bed if you're an older person who processes caffeine a little more slowly. And we're kind of mapping that all out here in this line chart. So let's talk about how we build this thing and kind of go through the process. This will be a fun one. Nothing too crazy here, just kind of standard Excel applied in some fun creative ways. All right, so you all already saw this table before, just hours and then different levels of caffeine based on a lower average and upper range for people's half-life of caffeine in their system. So basically this is a time series, right? We've got hours and then three different values plotted over time. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to insert. We're gonna drop in a line chart here. If we go to line chart, uh, this looks pretty good except for whatever reason, it plotted hours as a third series here. So we're just going to move this over and fix it. And there we go. There's our three values. So I'm just going to copy paste this over to our dark background so we can start styling it. All right, here's our chart. Let's just get it sized correctly. Then we're just going to get rid of any elements we're not going to use. In this case, the chart title and the legend. And then like first thing I do on almost every chart, I remove the background and I remove the border. And then I update the font color to be something that you can actually read on the background. And then we're going to just get these uh, font sizes increased a little bit. I'm also just going to click into these grid lines and I'm going to make them a little less brightly colored and I think I'm going to make them dashed too. Okay that's looking good. Um, so I want to get these series colors updated and styled. So our main series is this average middle one here. So I'm going to add a marker to it. I've just clicked into the line and gone over to the format data series pane, clicked over to marker, and I think I'm going to make these like a lighter color. Okay so I'm going with like a kind of blue greeny like slightly more saturated color so it stands out a little more. Um, if you want the hex value on this, it's uh, 009AC3, or the RGB is 0, 154, 195. I'm going to make sure I update my line as well to be the same color. Nice, I think that looks pretty good. For the upper and lower ranges, I'm just going to leave those as is, but I'm going to change the color to the same color and then make it like maybe 60% transparent. I'm going to do that to both of them, just so they're not too distracting, but they sh still show us those upper and lower ranges. And honestly, just to jazz this up a little bit, I'm going to click into my upper limit. I'm going to go to chart design, add chart element, and I'm going to drop in drop lines. When these first show up, they're just going to be boring lines like this. So we're going to click into them, give them a gradient fill, and we're going to take out the middle ones here in this gradient. And then on one side of the gradient, we're going to have our main green color. 
On the other side, we're gonna select that color again, but we're gonna make it 100% transparent. And I'm actually gonna make the other side a little transparent as well, just to kinda make it a little more subtle. And I'm also, I'm gonna give it a dashed line here. I really like using dashed lines for things. It's just a fun visual effect and it kinda de-emphasizes stuff a little bit. And nice, I kinda like how that looks. Maybe I'll make these a little brighter and I can just do that by reducing the transparency a little bit. There we go. Now, I like this one thing that's bugging me. This over here are y-axis labels. Uh, I want these to just not have the 0, 0.00 and I also want it to say milligrams. So I'm gonna click into it. In our format pane, we're gonna go over to the uh, number options under axis options here. For our format code, we're gonna delete the 0, 0.00 and we're just gonna type quotation mark, MG quotation mark, and then hit add. And there we go. It says milligrams over here now. All right, cool. I'm kind of liking this. I might um, reduce these grid lines a little bit. They feel a little bright to me, but overall, I really like this. So now we want to start adding in callouts. Callouts are things just like guidance to help people understand what they're looking at. You're going to hear me a lot on this channel talk about the need to over explain instead of under explain things. So always give as much context as you can to help people understand what they're looking at. So under the insert tab, I'm just going to drop in a line. Um, quick note, don't start this from next to the chart. Start it from above the chart because sometimes shapes will actually get included in the chart object and it'll mess things up for you. So just start above and draw down. You can hold shift to make sure it's straight. Great, I'm going to make this line a little thicker and I'm going to make it dashed. I'm going to make this the same color as our series just so there's a little relationship between the call out and the series it's referencing. Now next to this, I'm just going to insert a rectangle. This is just a little thing to show where the text goes. I'm going to remove the line around the outside and I'm just going to change the fill color to the green we've been using. Okay, excellent. And now we're going to insert a text box. It's under the insert tab, text box. Uh, just a heads up, these are going to go in with a white background and an outline. So you're going to want to remove the fill, remove the outline. You can type your text in here, but you're not going to be able to see it yet, right? Because black text on a dark background is not really legible. So I'm going to turn this to white uh, and just click the whole text box, change your font color to white. I'm going to also increase this font size to like 16-ish. And then I'm going to adjust this rectangle just to be the same height as my text. Just make things look a little cleaner. And you know what? I think I want to make this font color, instead of white, maybe like slightly blue. So this is basically, I've taken my main color here and then gone over and sort of desaturated it by moving towards the center and lightening it this way, just to make things easy for everyone at home. This is a hex value BDE2F0 and the RGB is 189226240. Now I always encourage people, copy paste stuff when you can to save yourself some time. Instead of trying to rebuild this over and over again, just hold shift, select each object, control C, control V, drag it over to wherever you want it. And then all you need to do is just make your line the right height. So I'm just dra drag that down and then maybe I'll select all the and just move them over a little more because I actually want it over like the 16 mark here. If you're wondering, hey, what notes should I put in here? What should I call out? We're thinking about this kind of like a story, right? It's plotting something over time and we're trying to explain that, hey, you drink coffee in the morning. At bedtime, you still have a decent amount of that caffeine in your system. And then the next morning, you still have even more of it. And then that's going to continue over time. So we're thinking about it in that sense. Write it out as a clear, simple narrative first and then add in notes, add in context to your charts to reflect that narrative and explain it to people. You know, we can just shift click, copy everything again, paste it over. You know, in this case, my text is a little longer, so I'm gonna make the rectangle match the height of the text. These little steps, just making sure that things are nice and clean, everything aligns, everything looks nice. They go so far to making your work look more professional and more engaging. And once we got it all in there, we got a nice, beautiful chart, looks great, tells a story, gets a message across to people. I think it's really good. You can really do so much in Excel with the chart customization features and the design features. And you probably noticed in this video that really all these features work exactly the same way as PowerPoint. You know, you're dropping in shapes, dropping in text, that sort of thing. The UI is basically the same UI as PowerPoint. All right, I hope you all learned some cool lessons about caffeine today. <laughs> you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. And if you want templates like this or any of the other ones you see in my videos, they all come out of my newsletter. There's a link on my profile. It's totally free. I send out free templates every week. That's all for now, everyone. Have a good day.